Well, so uh, I'm super pumped. I'm gonna try to hold back my geekiness because uh, the woman that I'm about to introduce, she's pretty much been in every single awesome sci-fi series out there in the past 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Remember as Zoe, remember as Angel, remember as Jasmine, uh, Alias, Anna Espinosa, or me, Cleopatra 25. Yeah. So far, so good. I've been here, uh, I've been signing for just a half hour so far, and um, <laughs> yeah, everybody's just so happy to be here, so you know, how, what, what could be bad about that? No, seriously, and I have to ask, so earlier this year you had a little reunion with one of your uh, Firefly co-stars, Nathan Fillion. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like for you? It was fantastic. You know, I agreed to do it um, because I hadn't seen Nathan in such a long time. Or, Work schedules just uh, didn't allow for uh, for socialization, so it had been quite a few years since I had seen Nathan, and uh, and I showed up on set, <laughs> and we're doing a rehearsal, and we're rehearsing our scene, and and suddenly I feel his presence, <laughs> <laughs> just all of a sudden, very suddenly, and he literally just kind of he ran onto the into the studio just in front of me. <laughs> And I turned around and literally screamed. I squealed like a five-year-old girl at Christmas time because I hadn't seen him in so long. It was just so great to, to see my captain. <laughs> so do you guys in Firefly, because there was no doubt about it, you guys were such a tight family. Uh, do you guys have like mixers or yearly reunions? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we definitely keep in touch. We're texting fiends. Um, uh, and I'm shooting suits here in Toronto, so... Thank you so much for watching! And I don't wear a gun, or, and I'm not in a spaceship, so thank you! Thank you! I'm in Davis, you look awesome in your suits. Um, so, obviously today it's all about the fans, so anyone who has a question, raise your hand. Use your diaphragm, because you're going to have to shout. Um, so, I already see a hand way in the back, girl with the shirt. Can you bring it closer? Well, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I think the 
they're, uh, they're different sides of the same coin. Um, it, it's interesting. Um, when I think about it, I have, I have this terrible habit of playing very strong women. <laughs> Um, but what's, what I love about both of them, um, and the, what I think I, I give to both of them is, is um, an unapologetic femininity. Because I really do believe that um, a woman's power is in her ability to step into a man's shoes and make their job better. <laughs> it is to stand in her own shoes, or stilettos, <laughs> our boots, um, and really create a better world. So, and I think they both do that in their own way. Gina, I, I gotta ask, your roles have been so iconic for being powerful, girl power. I mean, did you anticipate that those were going to be the kind of roles that you would get when you? No, God, no. I mean, it's it's really been such um, such a blessing. You know, when I started as an actor. No one knew what to do with me. They, it's, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was usually maybe about six inches to a foot taller than most of the actors, so I you know, couldn't play the girlfriend, couldn't play the wife. Couldn't, I was a little too overwhelming to be the best friend, so they didn't want me next to the lead, because I was usually a foot taller than <laughs> um, And then, God bless him, Rob Tappert, who created um, Xena. And the yes. franchises said, I know exactly what to do with you. I'm going to give you a sword. <laughs> So that was, uh, you know, this, this entire genre, which is really where strong women have a place to be and live and thrive and evolve um, in sci-fi and, and um, fantasy and action. That has been my bread and butter, and it has bled into other things. And so I, I, I could not be more grateful and thankful for you guys who keep coming. That's a question over there. Not sure. Um, it did. It developed. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely it developed. Um, I, it, you know, I, I, I'm very early. I loved watching musicals. I loved the old studio musicals uh, growing up. Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and you know, Robert Keel. I loved the whole. Uh, and all I wanted to do really was musical theater um, on stage. And so that was my world, and, but unlike, not unlike sci-fi, we're talking about bigger than life. We're talking about um, a suspension of disbelief that sort of fills your soul and your heart with possibilities. And, and so the genres are really very similar, I think, because you have to sort of believe in a world where somebody breaks into song to express themselves. <laughs> Is it bizarre? Just as equally as you have to believe in a world where there are mutants and <laughs> flying people living side by side, harmoniously. So what's it like for you switching over from that fantastical world, which you do so much of, to something like Suits, where it's more grounded in reality? Well, let's talk about Suits. <laughs> <laughs> grounded in reality. Yes, it's present day, but they are impossibly witty and impossibly good looking people. <laughs> in impossibly expensive suits, and, and they look impossibly good and put together all the time. So, um, reality? <laughs> Um, but I don't have to talk about um, whether an engine is falling apart and why. <laughs> um, there are no reavers. <laughs> there. Um, it, so it's it's um. Oh gosh, it's it's not that difficult. I think you just as an actor, that's it's it's just a different um, uh, sandbox, you know, that you get to play in. Right in the front, Doctor Who. <laughs> Hello, Doctor Who. <laughs> 
amazing. My wardrobe is ridiculous. <laughs> That is the most. That is the most asked question. I don't know if anybody heard that, but do do I get to keep some of my suits wardrobe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And it's fine. Every now and then, I do see. Like I, I'll get to wear a dress where I go, "That's a Gina dress." <laughs> Gina needs this. <laughs> um, but a lot of the time, it feels like I'm I'm like wearing my really cool big sister's clothes, <laughs> and she would hate it if I like went in and. Because I have a really cool big sister, and she hated it when I wore her clothes. So I, you know, sometimes I borrow it. But right behind Doctor Who. Uh, I'm a big fan of Firefly, but I just this isn't a question. I just like to thank you for being uh, responsible for the death of Sherry Palmer. <laughs> You're very welcome. I enjoyed that very much. Are there any children here? <laughs> Yeah, she was not a nice lady. <laughs> right back there in the red shirt. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to know, uh, like, now that you're right here in Toronto and doing a lot of the pursuits, you were also called in to work on Hannibal. Woo! How was it like uh, to work with your husband? In the God, that is that. Lots of buzz this week. Ben Affleck as yeah. uh, Batman. Yeah. Have you talked to uh, Lawrence about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you talked to uh, your hubby about it? I mean, what's your reaction? No, why did I talk to my hubby about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he comes home. We have dinner. <laughs> we tend to our child. Um, I, I think he's excited that it's coming back. Um, that it's happening. Uh, great fan. Zack Snyder, huge. Um, uh, now I'm blanking. That's a terrible thing to waste a mind. Uh, punch. Oh, uh, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. Thank you. Yes, huge, huge fans of Sucker Punch. Uh, and so when when we found out that he would be at the helm of, of Superman, we were very excited. So I think it's going to be great. I mean, the man obviously knows what he's doing. It's a terrific cast of actors. Uh, you know, look. Every, everybody has their favorite Batman. All these things are very personal. I, I have to wait to see how he looks in the mask because for me it's about lips. Put the Batman mask on and then we'll see. 